What's up guys, Ron from Ron Roy Law here. And in this video, we're gonna be sitting down with George Pino, who is a broker in Los Angeles. He has built with his partner, Joe, just an incredible powerhouse of a real estate brokerage. And what we're gonna talk about is the early developments of if you're a commercial real estate broker or an agent, a lot of these fundamentals as you're starting your early practice in your career, they apply to being a lawyer as well as a broker. And you've got to understand the relationship between these two parties if you want to invest in yourself. So George, welcome and, and thanks for joining me today. Well, thanks for having me, Ron. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, you know, I think um, this is a really interesting time in the market and we were just chatting beforehand, but uh, you know, what, what are you, what is your background, I guess, in, and the recessions or slow periods? It's weird. I don't want to call it a recession, but we're seeing a decrease in volume. That is a, that is a fact, but tell us about Absolutely. your background and, and your experience with that. Absolutely. And, you know, I've been lucky enough to be in the business now for a little bit over 30 years. Well, well, okay. In all honesty, a little bit over 35 years now. Uh, so right out of college, jumped into the business, uh, lucky enough to be in it. But um, what that has really given me as well is this is now our third downturn in the marketplace, major downturn. We've had some smaller slips and slides. Um, but, you know, of course, there was the uh, early mid 90s, especially in the uh, savings and loan industry throughout well, throughout the United States, but especially California as well and Texas. And then also, um, you know, back in the 2008, 2009, we all know what happened there. And uh, now we're uh, coming in again. So it, the nice part is we've been able to um, kind of see the signs a little bit, see what's happening, the um, analogies, of what's got, what happened in the past and use our experience from that to try and adjust a little bit and position ourselves for the future like where we're at what we're doing and a lot of the stuff that when we originally created this company 15 actually 17 years ago now um we wanted to try and incorporate that because we saw kind of like a little bit of a broken model with uh, a lot of the commercial brokerage firms that were out there already interesting yeah you know i th i feel a lot of kinship to that um law for me i i started my own practice law is such an antiquated model you know it's this old mm -hmm. school thing where you come in to see your lawyer you are impressed by his office you sit down there you have a long chat he bills you hourly for it and he goes you go on the way and 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 that's it you know mm -hmm. that was the old model and if you didn't have a referral or if you didn't have information you just trusted your lawyer and i think um I think people doing it now understand that people are mobile, people are learning about new asset classes, they're learning about new markets, and they're going to the internet to to find their their service providers and their trusted team. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and we're seeing that as well. You know, and and I think, you know, they uh, there's a quote that was attributed way back. You know, that survival of the fittest, which is a little bit off. It's more about survival of the most adaptable. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think the nice part is. Um, you know, from what we saw, you know, back in 2008, 2009, there was a company, Grubman Ellis, that uh, kind of went BK. They were specializing, doing primarily single tenant at least. And when that market completely dried up, they were such a battleship that it was hard to navigate the changing times. You know, it, it's, yeah. you know, if you think about it, uh, you know, I like to use analogies when I do my classes and teaching, but, you know, you, you have battleships that are very powerful and strong and everyone loves them. But at the same time, they're not necessarily the best fit for each time because, you know, they are big and strong, but they don't turn on a dime. In the meantime, you can have smaller, let's say more of a, a boutique type firm um, that compared to like a speedboat or a PT boat or a destroyer that can easily turn and navigate the distinct waters around there instead of trying to force their way through it. So, you know, you have to kind of be nimble on your feet. And I think you have to adapt, especially with changing times now. You know, they say technology changes, you know, doubles every, you know, every two years. And we're already seeing that change. I mean, with AI, with videos, yeah. with, and we talked a little bit about this earlier, just the marketing aspect of it has changed tremendously for commercial real estate just in the last five years. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so what have you guys done in terms of like actual steps through those recessions? Do you do it? in the early start or do you do it in the middle of the recession when do you make those changes to the to the business early start you have to be early, early. you okay. have to be early and you have to start uh prog kind of prognosticating so to speak <laughs> that's even a word <laughs> and uh trying to uh uh you know determine where and what's happening the nice part is you know even in downturns business usually does not stop 
you know, people may downsize, but other companies are going to experience a boost in their business and possibly expand as well. So there's always some expansion contraction issues. Now we're experiencing a little bit uh, more of a negative issue right now, I think because of the COVID with the workforce and, and uh, uh, office space, which is a whole different beast right now. Um, but we're also seeing some really good growth in retail market. So, you know, yeah. a lot of that is positioning ourselves to seeing what the trends are, where we're at. You know, for instance, um, for a long time, we weren't necessarily going after a lot of the multifamily uh, agents to bring in uh, because there was it was just such a tight, tight market that the majority of the agents weren't only they were only doing one or two deals a year. There's so many agents out there. Um, so we're picking and choosing our battles of where we can actually really focus and make an impact in with our business and with our clients. Um, so, you know, the nice part, one of the changes that we made, a lot of uh, brokerage companies, they assign you a kind of a, a, a asset class to work in. And you are stuck in that asset class with those larger brokerage companies a lot of times. And that's all they teach you. That's all they train you in. That's all they really want you to focus on, which I understand you should be a specialist in your field. That being said, is that if there's a major downturn like we've experienced or something happens like the pandemic and all you did was office, you're out of business now. And unless right. you have savings for two, three years, you're not going to be able to weather that storm. So we're seeing, we saw a lot of agents get out of the business and actually go out for paying jobs and going out elsewhere because there just wasn't any transactions happening. And unfortunately, they weren't trained to do any other asset class. So our philosophy has always been absolutely specialize in an asset class, in an area, and then, but also start working and understanding all the asset classes. And we also built a team with agents that specialize in different asset classes so that they can actually rely on one another. And that's part of the company culture. We want them to kind of, um, I don't want to say rely on one another, but cooperate, um, you know, hand in hand, almost a team atmosphere. But at the same time, they're not a team. They just look out for one another. It's, uh, if anything, and I know the term was used and overused, and I don't like to use it now because of it, but it's kind of a family. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, no, there's there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's it's overused because it's not accurate. But if it's accurately depicting that there was a there was a big article about Bob uh, Knockall and, you know, the New York broker and mm -hmm. the brokerage that he built. But they yeah, said that was family where, you know, they would work together. They would go to happy hour. They go to dinners, yeah. weekends that, you know, the families get together. And mm -hmm. that was family. They were just so intertwined every single day, every hour, they enjoyed each other's company. And Absolutely. they said that was like a family like atmosphere. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, I, I, we started that, uh, I mean, when we started our own company and we, we created it, um, one of the key components was that if we're going to do this, we're going to do it the way we want, as opposed yeah. to another company that if we were agents, this is a company that we'd want to go to, um, you know, and, and with that in mind, I would also, I believe in being very upfront with clients, agents, anybody, my, my family and uh, new agents coming in. We always used to say, you know, yes, agents, sales agents uh, need, they need a, a pretty healthy ego to be successful in the business, <laughs> but you can check that ego at the door because everyone has one here. <laughs> and yeah. uh, more importantly, what I used to say to all the agents was, you know, I have a teenage daughter at home. I don't need any more drama in my life at the office. 